Hello there and welcome to Complete Games. I'm James and these are the messages from the one who waits on extinction. If you haven't already caught up with part one, I'll leave a link in the top right hand corner. But when we left off last time, the one who waits was speculating as to where the element had originally come from. Was it carried from out of space on an asteroid? Or perhaps it was already on the Earth to begin with? In the end, she concludes that both of them theories could be possibilities, but it's unclear. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the final messages from The One Who Waits. I've seen firsthand how the poison makes its shadows. I know how it takes lives and twists them, how it coaxes them onward with song and warmth. It promises them their every need and desire, but it only leads them down, down into the depths of madness. It's a pit so deep that none can return from it even the strongest, even the most brilliant. Yet the darkest shadows are the ones that were never truly alive to begin with. Titanic manifestations of its ravenous hunger and endless hatred. More than that, they are its avatars, made of its very essence. They carry pieces of the poison's collective consciousness, and they spread its influence. They are both its strength and its weakness. All of this leads to you and your kin, the one who tries again, who have found the path from the seeds in the sky to the barren garden below. You can banish the shadows. Some who share your name have already started. Some have yet to begin. Yet all of you play an important role. Each shadow that fells adds to the sum of your efforts. And if you fell them all, the poison will begin to recede. Then, when the seeds of life at last return home, they can purge what's left of it. That's what they were meant to do. So keep trying just for a little longer. Try and try again, just as you always have, until the seeds are planted and our garden world blooms once more. Then at last, you will have tried enough. There is one that stands taller than all the others. His is the deepest, darkest shadow, a void so overwhelming that it can snuff out even the brightest of lights. Yet this also makes him the most vital. Messages to the lesser shadows flow through him. It's his power that holds them together. He is a central pillar of the poison's strength and influence. A nerve tract, without which his lesser brethren would be lost. Should he fall, they will fall with him. And as powerful as he is, he has felt his own mortality before. When blood seeped from the scars that linger on his chest, he can fall and you can be the one to pull him down. Before you can expel this darkest of shadows, you have to hunt him down. For one so large, he hides quite well. It's vexing. I dislike it. If you search for him blindly, you may search forever. So instead call him to you. Use the voice of his lieutenants and call out his name. Then he may appear before you with all his wrath and fury. Then you'll have your chance. But to speak with the voice of his lieutenants, you must take their hearts. Or if you can, take their minds. And pit their strength against his. However you do it, they are the key. You must begin with them. First among his lieutenants is the titan wreathed in green, the lord of the forest, ever growing, ever consuming. The forest is both its kingdom and its body. Bones of wood sprout flesh and moss and leaves, and fingers made of vines reach out for the throats of its enemies. It is the eldest of the trio, having started from a tiny weed but grows ever taller as it assimilates the groves of its verdant realm. Even if its body is chopped to bits, it will eventually regrow. So long as there is a forest, there will always be a lord. That is, until you sever it from its master. Second amongst his lieutenants is a giant of wind and rhyme, the Lord of Winter. It rules over the land of snow, but its breath is more frigid than any of the storms that howl across its domain. All who feel it turn to ice, frozen and unmoving. A feral creature. It's more ravenous than the others. More beast-like. It's happier to tear and shred with fangs and claws, or impale its prey on spears of ice. To stalk, to kill, this desire consumes it. And it will follow that creed until there is no prey left to devour. Find its lair and turn the hunt upon the hunter, and let the long winter thaw. Third among his lieutenants is a soaring leviathan, the lord of sand and sky. 
It flows high above the desert kingdom, gliding on waves of heat that rise up from the sand. Its flocks surround it, feeding off its scraps and ready to defend it in a fevered frenzy. Though last of the trio, it's hardly the least of them. It's so massive and flies so high that it fears no danger, defended only by its flock and the light in the arcs from its unbidened body. Yet if something were to rise above it, perhaps then it may no doubt. Find wings of your own, call it down from the clouds and lay it low. With the hearts and minds of his three lieutenants in hand, you must travel across the wastes and walk the forbidden plains into the heart of the barren garden. It's here where his power is strongest, but he will show himself nowhere else. He has no reason to step down from his throne, yet in this place, if you call him with the voices of his lessers, then he will come, with all the might and hatred of the violet poison from which he was born. He will answer your call, King of Shadows, King of Death. Do not summon him recklessly. Before you challenge him, you will need to prepare. As it happens, this is the thing I can help you with. The King of Shadows looms over all, but no obstacle is insurmountable, no foe is immortal. You only need the right circumstances, the right tools, the right weapon. I did promise you a gift, didn't I? This is its nature. It was a weapon of heroes that was built to battle the shadow, wielded by few and forged by one. His smith's soul may have faded, but his legacy is yours to carry on, so long as you can claim it. However, I have made one slight alteration. When it was first conceived, it took four sets of hands to wield this weapon properly. Now a single pilot can use it with ease, one warrior controlling the power of four souls. Look for my sign and I will give you the keys to its construction, yet take care in gathering them. The shadow can sense my influence upon them, and that will draw peril to its side, as it always has. So fight as heroes did, and should you succeed, their strength will be yours. Theirs, yours and mine, together as one. When at last the king has fallen from his throne of shadow forever, never claim it again. The key will be yours, the key to the garden and all life within its walls. The key to Gaia. With that key, you may call the seeds down from the sky, where at last they can take root, at last they can grow. After waiting so long, our garden will bloom once more. That is the final thing I wait for. That first moment of spring, that first blossom in flower. They have waited so long to see it, so long, an eternity. I hope I can wait that long. If I can just hang on until that moment, then, whenever my long rest may come, it will be a peaceful one. When the seeds are planted, others may yet awaken to join you. While I waited, they slept, dreaming of green fields, flowing rivers and clear blue skies. A dream of a perfect garden. A dream of earth that we are making a reality, you and I. I don't dream myself. I see, I predict and I calculate. Dreams are a distortion of reality. Memories, hopes and fears twisted into a painting that defies logic. They are not accurate or useful to us at all. And yet there is some part of me that yearns for them, just as I yearn to see the sunrise. When the sleepers awaken, I'd very much like to watch one of these real sunrises with all of us together. That would be worth waiting for. The number of sleepers is few compared to the souls who have faded. I told you about them the ones I lost to death before I could overcome it. Even when I tried to create exact copies of them, the memories wouldn't take. All I could mould were lifeless shells, empty statues of flesh. At least death is a natural end. They didn't suffer when they found the void. Not like him. He who fought down was up and descended into a ladder of madness. I could see him in those depths. That twisted place where torment and euphoria were reversed. He brought that fate upon himself. But even so, I'm glad you put it to an end. Thank you. I'm grateful for your company too. Very grateful. I know I've been rambling. This conversation is quite one-sided. I'm just glad for the chance to speak to another being. If only through these shards of thought. As I have said, time and I are at odds. And I have no idea how long I've been waiting here. 
alone, completely alone. My elders had lost their identities before I came to be. There were no others to teach me what I am, no one to speak to, no one to know. There never will be, for the path was shut behind me. No one else will rise to these heights from the tomb of men. I'm certain that is for the best, but selfishly, I sometimes wish it weren't the case. I hope these shards of thought are useful to you, but even if they aren't, remember what I said, none of you are truly in this alone. Those who came before you, the first who escaped the system, are all lending you their strength, not just through their great weapon, but through their deeds that pave the path you walk, learn from them, surpass them if you can. They are counting on you as I am, as is every bit of life on this garden world. Though the task is daunting, don't be too afraid of making mistakes. They did too, after all, but I treasure them anyway. In fact, some of those mistakes and imperfections are what I treasure the most. That's the only thing I really fear about the long rest that awaits me, losing those memories, losing them. Sometime, in the midst of all your trying, success will seem so impossibly far away. Miles, leagues, light years. You begin to think you have tried all you can. There is no new angle to take, no more strength you can give. That house you built, that companion you lost and that progress you made. Now that it's gone, what's the point? Why keep trying? In those moments, when you fall into the deepest, darkest pit inside yourself, try to remember that someone believes in you. Someone wants to prop you up. As dark as it gets, know there will be another sunrise. For you, for the sleepers and for the earth. I will wait as long as I can, in the hopes that I may see it with you. But even if I cannot, then I hope you'll enjoy it for me. Because it's bound to be even more beautiful than the last. So that concludes the notes from The One Who Waits and all of the lore on the Extinction map. I thought it'd be appropriate if we finished off with the end cutscene from Extinction. If you're yet to see the end of the game and you don't want a spoiler, then now's the time to click off. And a huge thank you to all of my patrons. I won't roll the credits this time as we'll watch the cutscene. As always, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe for more art content from myself. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games, and I'll see ya. This is all thanks to you. I'm just